Good morning. It's uh, Thursday, the 27th of May, 2021. Whit Thursday, or Thursday in the octave of Pentecost. Uh, we're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book. Uh, to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. But first, let us acknowledge and confess our sins with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord filleth the world. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord filleth the world. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. 27th day of the month at morning prayer. The Psalms begin on page 502. We begin a series uh, at 120, uh, Psalm 120, that continues through to uh, 130. Uh, five, which are known as gradual psalms, uh, sometimes translated psalms of ascent. And these seems to be psalms that uh, describe the pilgrimage of God's people up to Jerusalem 
Uh, and we see that pilgrimage and uh, uh, from different points of view, um, not least of which is uh, the hope of deliverance from malicious enemies, uh, but also the joy of arriving in Jerusalem and the assurance of God's protection uh, of his people. When I was in trouble, I called upon the Lord and he heard me. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. What reward shall be given or done unto thee, thou false tongue, even mighty and sharp arrows with hot burning coals? Woe is me that I am constrained to dwell with Meshach and to have my habitation among the tents of Kedar. My soul hath long dwelt among them that are enemies unto peace. I labor for peace, but when I speak unto them thereof, they make them ready to battle. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh even from the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved, and he that keepeth thee will not sleep. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself is thy keeper. The Lord is thy defense upon thy right hand, so that the sun shall not burn thee by day, neither the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Yea, it is even he that shall keep thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand in thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity in itself. For thither the tribes go up, even the tribes of the Lord, to testify unto Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there is the seat of judgment, even the seat of the house of David. O oh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls, and plenteousness within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will wish thee prosperity. Yea, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do thee good. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And to thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, even as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, even so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God, until he have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are utterly despised. Our soul is filled with the scornful reproof of the wealthy and with the despitefulness of the proud. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. If the Lord himself had not been on our side, now may Israel say, if the Lord himself had not been on our side, when men rose up against us, they had swallowed us up alive when they were so wrathfully displeased at us. Yea, the waters had drowned us, and the stream had gone over our soul. The deep waters of the proud had gone even over our soul. But praised be the Lord, who hath not given us over for a prey unto their teeth. Our soul is escaped even as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we are delivered. Our help standeth in the name of the Lord who hath made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. They that put their trust in the Lord shall be even as the Mount Sion, which may not be removed, but standeth fast for ever. The hills stand about Jerusalem, even so standeth the Lord round about his people, from this time forth for evermore. For the scepter of the ungodly shall not abide upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put their hand unto wickedness. Do well, O Lord, unto those that are good and true of heart, 
As for such as turn back unto their own wickedness, the Lord shall lead them forth with the evildoers, but peace shall be upon Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This morning I'm going to read the lessons that were appointed for evening prayer yesterday, so for those of you who are reading evening prayer, my apologies. I won't do this often. In these weeks of uh, when we have sort of thematic readings chosen, uh, sometimes uh, I like to jump around a little bit. So Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 9. This is one of the books of the Apocrypha, um, uh, the uh, ancient additions to the Old Testament, uh, which have been considered part of Scripture, but in, with a kind of secondary status. Um, as the articles of religion tell us, they may not be used to um, establish doctrine. Um, uh, their primary benefit is for the, our instruction in uh, manners, our, our way of life. Um, and yet there are passages like this which certainly confirm and amplify uh, the doctrine of the canonical scriptures. Um, and this is one of them. It's speaking a very familiar theme indeed from uh, Corinthians of the distinction, um, there's there's the wisdom of men, and there, then the wisdom of God. And uh, it is the Holy Spirit that imparts the wisdom of God to men. And here, um, from uh, uh, the mouth of a king like Solomon, a prayer uh, for this wisdom. O God of my fathers, and Lord of mercy, who hast made all things with thy word, and ordained man through thy wisdom, that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made, and order the world according to equity and righteousness, and execute judgment with an upright heart. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne, and reject me not from among thy children. For I am a servant and son of thine handmaid, I am a feeble person and of a short time, and too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. For though a man be never so perfect, among the children of men. Yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. For that thou hast chosen me to be a king of thy people, and a judge of thy sons and daughters, thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon the holy mount, and an altar in the city wherein thou dwellest, a resemblance of the holy tabernacle, which thou hast prepared from the beginning. And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy works, and was present when thou madest the world, and knew it was acceptable in thy sight, and right in thy commandments. And now we're going to notice that wisdom here is, is personified um, uh, as a lady wisdom. That's a she. Uh, o sender out of thy holy heavens, and from the throne of thy glory, that being present she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and so shall lead me soberly in my doings, and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable, and then shall I judge thy people righteously, and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. For what man is he that can know the counsel of God? Or who can think what the will of the Lord is? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, and the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things, and hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven, who hath searched out? And thy counsel, who hath known? Except thou give wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. 
The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up for ever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the third chapter of the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. And in the second chapter, we read yesterday, he makes the distinction, as I mentioned, of being the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of God. Uh, and here he um, extends that theme as he brings into sight the faction and division uh, that worldly wisdom has introduced into the church at Corinth. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, fleshly, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers, by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos has watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted and planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth, and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall reveal it, shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? And this is, those are plurals, right? He's speaking about the church. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. 
and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism, reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and one another and the whole church and people of God to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men that God's ways may be known unto them in saving health unto all nations. For the church um, and its unity in the truth of the gospel and in brotherly love for its mission throughout the world and in this place for our country and all countries, for their peace, order, and good government, for the clergy and people and the faithfulness of their witness and worship, for those who suffer in mind, body, or state, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy outcome from the afflictions. I bid your prayers for those who are uh, dealing with the challenges of age and failing health, uh, for those dealing with cancer, recovering from surgery, uh, those dealing with long-term consequences from COVID infection, those who are grieving, those who suffer depression, mental illness, substance, addiction. And we remember before God those who've departed this life in the faith of Christ and are at rest in him, that we with them may rise to glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only, that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, who is at this time, didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people by the sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, 
and evermore to rejoice in thy holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, through, Christ, through the merits of Christ Jesus, our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, today we read simply what is poetically and uh, spiritually one of the most beautiful of all the Psalms, Psalm 124, if the Lord himself had not been on our side, now may Israel say. If the Lord himself had not been on our side when men rose up against us, they had swallowed us up alive when they were so wrathfully displeased at us. Yea, the waters had drowned us. The stream had gone over our soul. The deep waters of the proud had gone even over our soul. But praised be the Lord, who hath not given us over for prey unto their teeth. Our soul is escaped even as a bird under the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we are delivered. Our help standeth in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. That's where our help stands, in the maker of heaven and earth. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace. Amen.